Okay, we are calling the meeting to order, and uh, we will start with our roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Kim. Commissioner Kim. Commissioner Guetta. Commissioner Singh. Yes. Commissioner Vasquez. Here. Commissioner Cutie. Commissioner Rodriguez. Chairperson White. Here. Alternate Commission Member Kemp. We have a quorum. Excellent. Uh, our next order of business is we'll ask uh, Commissioner Rodriguez to read the land acknowledgement, please. I'd like to acknowledge the land on which we live, work, learn, original homelands of the indigenous people of West Sacramento, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We acknowledge and we thank the original inhabitants who have occupied, maintained, and secured this place, and who still exists on this land. We respect and celebrate the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Vasquez, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Noting that we have a flag this time. <laughs> Pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under all, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. <laughs> I knew I would do that. Thank you very much. And I do want to, because we're still a new commission, just a reminder to check your microphone that the blue, green button is on, and you might need a little push the gray switch right in the front of your microphone. So just a reminder of that. Um, so anyone who is wishing to address the commission can do so with a, not on an agenda item, can fill out a card out front. And uh, do we have any public matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of this commission? There were no comments from the public for this meeting. Excellent. Well, we are going to move right along then to agenda item number two, which is a presentation on the update of the Small Business Accelerator Program. There you go, okay. Good evening, Chair White, members of the commission. I'm Tracy Michael, the Economic Development and Housing Director. I'm joined this evening by Elijah Ortega, behind me, our community investment planner with the department. And we're very excited to present um, an introduction to the city's small business accelerator program. So full disclaimer, this program is really in the very early stages of being developed. We wanted to get in front of the commission to be able to provide some background on the program's genesis funding and potential components that we're considering as part of the program in order to better prepare the commission for future feedback when we come back to you with more detailed information. So just a little bit of background. The, the Small Business Accelerator Program proposes strategic city investments designed to support small businesses. In West Sacramento, we have over 1,800 small businesses that employ between five and 20 employees, which cumulatively accounts for tens of thousands of jobs. Um, of that amount, uh, approximately 1,200 businesses are licensed as home-based businesses. These businesses provide much needed products and services for West Sacramento residents while creating jobs and providing local entrepreneurs of all income levels with avenues to personal advancement. Traditionally, the city has assisted small business owners on more of an ad hoc basis, responding to specific questions as they come in. This can be anything from helping um, somebody navigate the business license process, can be assisting with identifying potential um, commercial spaces within our community, or even coordinating with other city departments on plan reviews and permitting, which can sometimes be very daunting. 
Unfortunately, we don't have an intentional program designed to support or grow small businesses in West Sacramento, especially minority and woman-owned businesses and those located in our disadvantaged neighborhoods. So this program is in the early formation stages, but we are looking to incorporate best practices from other programs implemented in the region. And, um, and again, you know, really wanting to get in front of this commission early because um, we anticipate this is going to be you know, at least a year-long process in developing the program, and we'll be coming back to you multiple times for input. So just a little bit of information about the funding, and that was really the impetus for us bringing this to you today because we recently received funding, and it's been a bit of a process to get to this point. Back in 2019, Measure N was adopted um, by our community, which provides uh, as a unique funding source for us to implement a variety of um, community-serving projects and programs. In February, of, or after it was adopted, the council committed that 30% of Measure N revenues over time would be um, focused on inclusive economic development activities. So in 2023, we took a, an item to city council as part of their annual strategic planning process that outlined um, the objectives and desired outcomes of a small business accelerator program. At that time, the council was supportive of us moving um, that program forward as part of our regular biannual budget process. So just last month, as part of our budget process, council did approve one and a half million dollars for this program. The Small Business Accelerator Program will be the first um, inclusive, one of the first inclusive economic development activities funded through Measure N funding. So I'm gonna turn it over to Elijah to talk uh, a little bit more about some of the program components that have been considered to date. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so at this point, I wanna talk a little bit about um, the potential eligible uses um, that we think this program could step in and fund. Um, these are areas of focus that frequently come up when we're engaging and supporting our small businesses uh, throughout the city. Um, these are often some of the most difficult scenarios that require um, a lot of staff time and effort to uh, really guide um, small business owners and entrepreneurs through these city processes. Um, and as such, we think this. Um, could be a good opportunity for um, a, a more sustainable, um, systematic uh, approach to addressing these recurring issues that are um, occurring uh, in our business community. Um, so the first would be uh, assistance with design and permitting costs. So that would include um, things like um, uh, costs for design professionals, architects, uh, engineers, um, a variety of uh, different professional uh, consultants that are often needed uh, for um, new startup businesses that are coming into uh, new brick and mortar locations in the city. Um, oftentimes, um, this is an area um, that's not uh, thoroughly explained to business owners or entrepreneurs that are starting a new business. Um, it's often a source of confusion um, for a lot of folks that are um, just attempting to uh, get their doors open. Um, and we often see them running into these roadblocks of uh, things like occupancy, uh, change of use fees, uh, site plan requirements, uh, ADA and um, accessibility requirements. Um, so these are things that come up um, that sometimes small business owners, um, and particularly um, our small business owners from uh, um, disadvantaged communities and minority backgrounds, um, don't have the resources um, or experience to really um, address these issues um, and don't know how to navigate the process. Um, so we do see this um, come up frequently and we think this is a, a good opportunity for our program here uh, to really step in with um, a more organized approach for assistance uh, to these people that are running into these issues. Um, the next would be um, assistance with on-site costs. Um, so that can include things like storefront and tenant improvements. Um, and possibly lease term and rent incentives. Um, so these are more hard costs um, that uh, small businesses uh, do have to incur uh, before they can open their doors. Um, things like bringing the building up to code, um, any other requirements um, 
Uh, oftentimes, this includes utility requirements. Um, so uh, these, are, these are often significant depending on the age of the building um, and the um, prior use of the building that um, a business wants to go into. Um, and these can be um, really kind of a make or break point for small businesses um, when they're evaluating um, these costs and evaluating whether or not um, it's really um, worth it and whether or not they're committed to really move forward um, with their business idea or their business plan um, when they start to see um, a lot of these hard on-site costs come up um, uh, in, the, in the licensing and permitting process. Um, so what we want to see is um, uh, the program to be able to step in with a little bit of relief uh, for these individuals that are um, experiencing these issues. Um, and we hope that it, it, number one, it provides relief um, and also gives them a, um, uh, more of a framework uh, to work through uh, with staff um, where we can step in with a, a more targeted approach um, to help out um, these uh, business owners that are running into these kind of issues. Um, it could also include uh, offsite improvements. Um, so these are another cost um, uh, that does come up. Uh, from time to time. Um, things like streetscape improvements, um, utilities and parking. So um, again, um, these are all components of opening a business that um, sometimes um, are not thought of um, and are not really factored into a, a, a small business plan um, going into it. Um, so again, really kind of a make or break point for um, our entrepreneurs and small businesses when they're um, looking at the obstacles that are needed uh, to get their doors open. Um, and the last would be um, another critical component, uh, which is financing tools. Um, a lot of small businesses um, do run into issues with access to capital um, and applying for loans um, and, and being approved for loans um, to support their business idea. Um, so we think that this could be an opportunity for the city to really step in with a, a framework and a strategy. Uh, to assist small businesses financially um, to help get their doors open. Um, in the past, uh, we have done um, uh, a revolving loan program um, that was, I believe, funded with our CDBG funds. Um, that program is no longer active, but um, as staff, we do have experience administering um, a program such as that. Um, so our idea um, is, number one, um, possibly uh, setting up a revolving loan fund. Uh, to assist our, our small businesses, um, potentially partnering with um, uh, local banks and financial institutions uh, to provide city loan guarantees as well um, as another option that's available. Um, and of course, more micro loans, which would include uh, smaller loans um, to assist with um, any component of, of opening um, the doors for a new business. Um, so those are really the areas of focus that um, we think uh, the city now has an opportunity, now that we have funding, uh, to really step in and design uh, a framework uh, for our small businesses to work through uh, with staff uh, so that we can assist the, the most number of businesses um, with the limited funds that we have um, and really start to make an impact for uh, our small business and entrepreneurial community. Um, and I think next I'm going to turn it back over to Tracy to talk a little bit more about next steps for the program. So as I mentioned, this is going to take a little bit of time to, to fully develop. Um, part of the reason is that we um, recently had um, a retirement in our department, Diane Richards, um, which, uh, you know, Elijah is a superstar, but he does split his time between economic development and housing activities. And so we really need that position to be filled to be able to focus on advancing this program. So that process is underway. I'll speak more to that a little bit under the director's report. Um, but the staffing is a big component of moving forward. And then also the continued review of existing programs and best practices in the region. We think that there's, um, you know, there's a lot to learn from what's being done in our neighboring communities. And, and then we'll have the ability to tailor it to, to fit our West Sacramento needs. 
And then there's stakeholder engagement, and that's going to be a big part of it, working with our, you know, our, our WESAC chamber and other chambers to really reach out to the business community, um, better understand what the needs are, and this commission is not going to be a, a key component of that engagement process. So we will be back in front of the commission, probably with multiple workshops before taking it to city council. Um, so that, that is all probably going to happen over the, the course of the next year. And, um, and we're just really excited now that we have the funding in place. As Elijah mentioned, we can um, put pen to paper and start developing a more refined framework for the program. So that concludes this presentation. Um, we're excited to be able to move forward. We're excited to bring something unique to West Sacramento, and we look forward to any comments and questions from the commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I can tell that JP has a question. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. It's a pretty exciting to, for the city to develop a program to encourage small businesses, helping them out and, and bringing it to the board. Um, is this program only for new businesses or for the existing ones too? It would, it would be for new businesses and business expansion with an emphasis though on supporting our small businesses and also minority and women-owned businesses and, and really also looking at, you know, um, some target areas where we want to grow business. Elijah's going to tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think that's um, that's accurate. Um, right. I think um, you know what one of the initial components that um, we still need to work through as we're developing this program would be um, specific uh, city priority areas, if you will. Um, in other words, geographic areas where um, the city would like to see more. Uh, commercial investment, um, distressed areas of the city, um, some of our older commercial corridors um, would be designated um, as priority areas for a program such as this. So when you say small and minority owned businesses, state has a program to certify the business as a minority owned or small business. So that will lump into this. I mean, they have the, the qualification for the business to get the loan or yeah, that, that's correct. And I think um, the state does have a designation um, that businesses can apply for to certify um, that they are minority owned and even women owned. Um, and so um, it's great when uh, we have businesses here um, that have gone through that process. Um, I will say um, oftentimes it can be a bit confusing for businesses to go through that process. Um, it's a little bit more of a sophisticated process. Um, often it does take some guidance. Um, and some assistance to really walk you through the steps. Um, there may be some apprehension uh, on behalf of business owners to go through that process. They don't understand the benefits of it. Um, so we hope to see more of that, um, uh, you know, in the future. Um, but you're right, JP. I think that, that that's a great place for us to start is really identifying who is certified already in our community, um, and we can start there. Um, the other one is, uh, you said, uh, under the eligibility uh, like off-site improvements, you said part of permit process, streetscape, utilities, parking. I think if somebody rents a building or a space for a business, that should be built in or by default should have utilities and, and the parking, whatever the building they have, whether two parking, four parkings. And, uh, Streetscapes, I mean, it should be compliance with the city requirement, whatever that building or business is. So if I'm going to rent a building and city comes in, oh, it doesn't have enough parking, I'm going to provide you more parking. I'm trying to understand where that leads to. Right. Well, um, this is something that we often see um, for businesses that are going into space that um, either hasn't been leased very recently, in other words, it's been sitting vacant. Um, uh, or um, if they want to build a new space. Um, so these are when um, these kind of off-site improvement discussions uh, often come up. Um, sometimes the property owner or the landlord uh, will step in um, to make a better deal for the, uh, for the leaseholder um, and say, well, I'll cover these improvements um, in order to make my space uh, uh, available for you in order for you to occupy it, right? Um, but sometimes we do see those costs being passed on to the leaseholder um, and the business owner. Um, and so I think in that scenario, 
um, that's when we would want to step in with this program. Um, we are seeing more and more uh, this issue um, with parking areas and uh, specifically um, ADA accessibility requirements come up. Um, and so we think this is an opportunity where um, if a small business owner or business owner in general um, is looking at a deal and saying, well, this, this could break my deal, um, potentially the city could come in and say, well, we can help you with our, our ADA requirements. Um, and I think that would be a perfect fit for a program like this. Thank you. And just to add to that, not that the, the Club Pheasant property would wind up being a new small business, but it's a really good example of a, a property that had an established business in it for a long time, had well water, a new, a new operator coming in is likely going to need to tap into the city's municipal water system. That can be a significant cost. And so, you know, those types of situations can come up as well where this program could really benefit the business. And, and it, it benefits the city um, as well. I did have a question that was sort of along the same lines as JP's. If you can go back to that slide where you go over the potential uses. Um, I, it's okay if you don't have this information now, but I'm wondering, um, again, you don't have to answer this now, but like the specifics around the challenges that they may face around tenant improvements, and again, on the question around offsite improvements. And the reason why I asked that is because it seems to me that some of these things should be basic rights of tenants. And I, I guess I can't, I can't kind of understand why some of these things, without knowing what they are, are their responsibility and not necessarily the landlords. I know as a renter, for example, renters have some rights around just basic upkeep of the apartment, whatnot, and how much of that is similar to like a new business. Um, so just sharing some examples of that in the future would be helpful. Uh, but if you have those today, it would be great to share. Yeah, I can. I, I think that's a great question, um, and I can speak a little bit to that. Um, you know, unfortunately, some of the issues um, that we run into with um, small business owners and entrepreneurs who are opening their first location, uh, who maybe don't have uh, much experience um, running a business, um, they'll enter into a lease agreement with the landlord without properly vetting the space. Um, and that does happen um, more often than you would think. Um, and so they begin paying rent and they come to us for permits thinking that on the, based on the word of the landlord, um, that this space is ready to go. Um, and that may not be the case. Um, it's really, um, you know, as a city, we have to take a close look at what the use is of the space. Um, there's, um, oftentimes, uh, fees that, um, are incurred when you're changing uses, uh, of a space. In other words, the prior use. Um, if you're not in line with the prior user um, or doing the same business as the prior user, um, then you begin to run into these uh, different code requirements. Um, and so we do see this often where we have uh, business owners come to us and they say, well, I've been paying rent on this space. Um, I'm just trying to get my doors open, but I have this long laundry list of, of requirements um, that I have to meet. Um, these are code requirements often, um, building requirements that um, unfortunately, due to um, not doing due diligence, uh, we have a business owner who's really stuck in this kind of precarious position. So th that's what I'm hoping to get clarity on is the line drawn between what is the responsibility of the landowner for, that, for those things and what is suddenly now, because I'm interested in leasing that space, now becomes my responsibility as a business owner. That doesn't seem... Fair, but maybe it's just the way that the laws are set up. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it really depends on um, the deal that was cut between the property owner and the leaseholder, um, and if that um, includes a deal for tenant improvements. So it's allowable under current law then for that to happen. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, Gracie, I don't know if you want to speak. Yeah, it's it's, it's very different from residential uses. In mm -hmm. commercial, it's much more negotiated. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the path that we're, you know, exploring here as a way to, you know, incentivize small businesses to come. But I still think at the end of the day, there's that big barrier that is just in statute, right, that is allowing, that it maybe is a barrier to um, growing this at a large scale. So I'm glad we're coming into this space, but it still seems like the bigger issue will remain absent our investment and support. 
And you actually gave me a great segue. It's one of the things I wanted to mention. Um, <clears throat> I realize that we have a long way to go and we're gonna have lots of opportunity to say, oh, fund this and don't fund this. But, um, you know, we have already experienced those times that, that, as you described, somebody signed a lease not realizing what they got themselves into. You know, unlike a rental lease for a house, a, a commercial property lease can be 50, 60 pages long. And I would really love for us to consider having some type of avenue for them to engage a, a, an attorney to review things before it gets to that point. Because it's so much cheaper to negotiate with the landlord rather than for you guys to have to pay for them to, for parking. And I will tell you, the example is the building in which I work. Nobody has assigned parking. There is no assigned parking in our building, but the, the broker tells every tenant that moves in there that they have assigned parking right outside there. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's not because the broker is being mean, it's because the broker did not read the 60 page rental agreement, so. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point in that the, um, like the liability is on like the entrepreneur who should have read the 60 page legal document. And so they didn't, they made a mistake, so then the city takes on that responsibility. And then, so once the city goes in and starts making changes to the building or the infrastructure, is there any liability that the city is accepting by doing that? Well, I think with this program, it wouldn't be the city. It would be the business owner. We would be providing resources in a variety of ways, but the actual um, uh, leasee would be the business owner. And so obviously as we go through this type of program, we have to vet all of those types of considerations and even things like making sure we fully understand what triggers prevailing wages and what type of financial support um, is you know, taxable for the business owner. There's, there are a lot of details in any type of financial assistance or technical assistance that we would provide a business owner. You might have... Oh, sorry, JB. You might have this in your other slide, um, but as you think long term, as like potential next steps or strategies, just for sustainability, if you're not thinking about partnering with a like local nonprofit, that could be a path as well. Because that's a great idea around connecting them to an attorney that can help them understand all the legal jargon. That is super intimidating and. Um, yeah, identify partnerships. So you have it. You're thinking about that. The law, a nonprofit. I'm just thinking of community resourcing. This yes. is how you support your community. And, and this is a, I know New York does it. There's a bunch of states that do this, but that's a great way to kind of bring in others to help carry on the work that you're starting. I have another suggestion or, or a point of view. You, you threw some previous. Uh, experiences or, or hurdles that businesses experience, maybe it's a good idea to develop a cheat sheet when, when they apply for a business license, go through A, B, C, D, you know? Because anybody renting a place or doing land use or anything, they have to have a business license. That's a very starting point. So when we city issue a business license, there should be a packet or something, do's and don'ts or how you develop it, you know? So they foresee what's coming along before you open the doors. Thank you. I have one more question. So I think we currently have a, a program to help small businesses, right? I think it's uh, not as well, not nearly as well funded, and it's really focused on, I think, uh, businesses that have employees less than, like, less than 10 employees or something like that. That's the CDBG. And so how does um, what we're doing now differ from where we're going? More services? Yeah, so um, the current program that's ongoing, they're actually having a um, class tonight over across the street at the community center. Um, that is strictly a technical assistance uh, program. Um, so in other words, workshops, classes, one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling uh, for entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, but it really stops short of actual um, financial, um, financial assistance, direct, direct city assistance. Um, now, the program that we do have um, operating currently uh, will connect um, uh, the people that are coming to the classes um, 
with uh, the regional SBDC um, and other um, potential sources of capital, access to capital. Um, but I think the difference between the program that uh, we're discussing tonight um, in front of you would be um, this, is, this, this would be city funds um, and a completely um, uh, city program that's run by city staff um, as opposed to our technical assistance workshops that are occurring. Uh, we do have a great partner for that, um, but the city staff is not um, uh, leading those workshops. Thank you. So I will just give a, you know, obviously I'm way in favor of this. And um, before either of you were here, back when we were remodeling the bowling alley, which thank you for the gorgeous picture of the bowling alley. Um, you know, we got to the point where we were way down that project and then learned that we had to put in a, a cut through from the sidewalk to the building for ADA access. And that was literally the final straw. We had gone through every dime. We looked under every couch cushion. We'd maxed out every credit card. And to come up with another, whatever it was, $12,000 to do that cut out, that was the end. And the city stepped in and did that. And so I think that having a formal program like this that is not just who comes begging with their hat in their hand is wonderful. So all four. I will volunteer to be on the committee that reviews the application. Thank you for your feedback and questions. All right, with no other questions, and we are going to hear about this a lot. And you know, one of the important points that this committee plays is that we are the voice of our of our friends and neighbors too. So it's a great time to be thinking about this with our small businesses that that may be ready to move into a new place or move up, and then be ready to come with those ideas and questions to our future meetings. So, uh, but you are not asking for any motions or decisions tonight, so information only. So we are gonna move on. Do you have more to say, Elijah, am I? You're just ready? <laughs> ready in case, okay. Uh, so we're gonna move on to our next thing, which is a motion. I need a motion to approve the minutes from our May 24th meeting, the last time we met. And remember, please, when you make a motion, say your name so that it's easy for them to record it uh, in the minutes. Commissioner Vasquez moves to approve the minutes. Any second? Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Vasquez and a second by Commissioner Singh. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, the motion passes. All right, that's a quick, I always love that one. It's a quick vote. Um, I was, uh, Mentioning I'm also on a county commission and it's a huge commission and every single thing has to be a roll call vote, even approving the minutes. And it's like, I can hear the clock tick as we go around the room. So, all right, uh, we are on to commissioner communications. Any, anything come up from the commission members that you wanna share that is relevant to the topics that we handle? All right, our director's report. Thank you, good evening. I'm gonna have Elijah come back up to share some exciting news about one of the items. Okay, um, yes, I do have exciting news uh, to share with you tonight as part of the uh, director's report. Um, our local IKEA over at uh, River Point Marketplace uh, has submitted uh, building plans for the building department to review uh, for an expansion project. Um, so big changes coming uh, for IKEA. Uh, the company is currently in the first round of plan check. Uh, we do anticipate a building permit, perhaps sometimes in the sometime in the fall. Uh, the project will be adding 83,000 square feet of new building area. Uh, the new area will contain a warehouse fulfillment center. And this new fulfillment center will allow IKEA to begin offering home delivery service in the Sacramento market. Uh, the project will be adding up to 18 new jobs and the home delivery vehicles will all be electric Ford E450 platform trucks. Um, and again, we just wanna congratulate IKEA on the continued success of their a West Sacramento location 
um, and staff look forward to supporting this uh, important progress uh, project for our community uh, moving forward. Thank you. That is really exciting. Where's that building going to be? Is it going to be across the street, back in the back? Uh, so this will be an expansion of their existing building. Um, and then they will be expanding out west uh, towards the highway. So, Eliza, just quick question. Is this an empty land they're building on? They're going to eat up some parking spaces. Parking space. This is the current uh, parking area to the west of the building. So when they build up 83,000 square foot, that triggers some parking spaces to be added, right? Uh, the parking area will actually be uh, decreased. No, no, no. What I'm saying, by default, when you add a building, that trigger, no? Mm -hmm. so, so the existing parking spaces, suppose they have 100 spaces. So their 100 spaces are more than the current requirement that mm -hmm. they're decreasing to 75, I'm ex hypothetically speaking. Yeah, that, that's correct. And that's a, a determination that um, will be made by the Planning Commission. Um, but as I understand it, uh, there will be parking area that will be uh, removed as part of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Really exciting. And, you know, as a person who works in electric transportation, I'm super thrilled to hear that they are going to move to electric trucks, and I hope they have their pg e application in already. <laughs> oh, my God, to run the power. It's taking them, they're like three years on running power right now. So um, they're just very, very, very busy people. Yes, so thank you, Elijah. I have a few more items just to report on. Uh, some staffing updates. I did mention that Diane Richards recently retired after 23 years of service to the city. Um, and so we're actively recruiting for a new economic development manager. Applications are due next Friday, August 6th. So if you know of anybody that might be interested, please direct them to our website. We also have a new administrative analysis, analyst position that's available. Um, this position was uh, uh, added and funded through our biannual budget process that was recently completed to provide much needed support for our parking program, um, including our new EV charging station program, which I'll touch on in a minute. And this position is currently open with applications due on August 21st. And, and then I'm also excited to announce that we recently hired a new senior program manager, Mark Bohemus, joined our team a few weeks ago. He comes to the city with many years of experience working in the private sector for EPS on a lot of complex um, municipal, financial, and real estate types of projects, and more recently for the governor's office as part of the state's GoBiz program. Um, so you'll be seeing him in, in coming meetings. Um, some new business development news, in addition to what Elijah shared, we do have our new EV charging station program that went into effect July 3rd. We are rolling this out on a site-by-site -site basis, so we already have uh, charging stations installed at Heritage Oaks Park. We recently installed some at the police station. Those are not accessible to the public. We have additional publicly accessible stations coming into the community center. Joey Lopes Park, our city surface lots, both at Grand and Tower Bridge Gateway and in the Bridge District, and a few other sites as well. So if you want any information about that, you can check our website. You can also reach out to our parking manager, Larry Lee, directly. I did want to provide an update on Club Pheasant. Um, we have an RFP out for really marketing and brokerage services to help the city market and recruit uh, high quality operators to the site. That proposals are due this Friday, so by the next time this commission meets, we'll have an update on a recommended uh, partner for us to help move that project forward. The Grand Gateway RFP um, for approximately 8.6 acres of city-owned land at the corner of Grand and Tower Bridge Gateway next to our surface parking lot is um, hopefully going to be available next week. We've got that almost teed up and ready to go, which provides a really exciting development opportunity. We did close on the Flamingo property and have successfully moved all of our home key participants from the economy in over to the Flamingo. And uh, I am very excited to announce that our department office has finally moved over to our new space located at 825 Tower Bridge Gateway. So if you're in the neighborhood, feel free to stop by. Um, we are, um, we've got the building staffed uh, mostly five days a week, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the best days to stop by. Um, and then um, I think that concludes my, my director's report. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, one more item, sorry. Uh, just a reminder that the next commission meeting's been canceled because of the city council meeting uh, schedule change. They will be using the chambers during our next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, Tracy, when are we gonna do the social media training? Isn't that a requirement for the? Yes, so Jennifer will have to come in probably in November then to, to do that training. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have no other items on our agenda. Usually, it seems like we have something on here that might be, and I may be confusing meetings, a request from the commissioners for future agenda items. Am I misremembering, maybe? Um, no, the agendas were modified because, okay. yeah, because we are, um, we, while we welcome ideas and do our best as staff to try to respond to requests from commissioners, we we have um, we really take our direction from the council, and so um, that item has been removed off from the standing agendas for all the commissions. Okay, thank you. Good to know, and I won't ask. All right. So with that, we need a motion to adjourn. Uh. Commissioner Singh, I propose a tonight agenda to be meeting to be adjourned. And a second. Commissioner Rodriguez, second that. Okay, it's been a motion by uh, Commissioner Singh and seconded by Commissioner Rodriguez. All in favor of adjourning after a 35-minute speed meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I didn't think so. Meeting adjourned. Yeah.